A few days ago, I was talking with my daughter. She is three years old. And uh, I said, uh, Ellen, I have to give an important talk. And the, starting, the start is very, very important as well. And I want to talk with you about how to start. And then I said, Elena, there are three, she said, actually, she said, nice. And then I said to her, there are three ways possible. One is, you know, we can touch remotely. You can touch your mom while she's at work. And she can caress you while you are at home as well. Or I can talk about helping blind people. Or I can even talk about my team. You know, I love my team. I, every day I go to work, I love my team. And she said, OK, let me think about it. After two seconds, she said, I decided. She didn't say, I think, I decided. I decided that you have to talk about blind people. Because I don't like that they cannot see. And I want that we help them. And this is the start of my talk. This is Rome, Colosseum. Rome is a huge city, 2.8 million people. Now, if you imagine that you have 100 cities like Rome, the number of people living in 100 cities like Rome is 280 million. This is exactly the number of blind people or visually impaired worldwide. It's a huge number. You can imagine 100 towns, cities like Rome, full of blind people. What's the big problem there? Well, the big problem is in uh, guidance, in moving around, where people have to go downtown from one point to another. Because they typically double the number, because each of them need the one who helps them living, moving. This is a picture where there is myself playing the role of guidance, and there is uh, Massimo and Antonio, two friends who are blind from uh, Siena, and actually Antonio uh, is here with their friend. Thanks for joining us. And uh, it's a very, very important moment. We were actually started cooperating uh, from this kind of talk. So this is also a huge opportunity for us. And we were in Florence. I had to guide them uh, to the bus station. And you know what happened? They came with me, and I was physically guiding them from the point where we were working to the bus station. Actually, they could have solved this problem in, two, in another way, by using the mobile with the earphone and listening to the navigator, turn right, turn left, go straight. But there are two big problems here. The hearing, the hear, the earphone. The earphone for them is terrible. For blind people, hearing is terrible. They don't want to have earphone. It's like, to give an example, like someone like me who can see if he walks with the newspaper in front of him. There is a stop between the site and the city. They use the hear like we are using the site. They get connected with the people, with the environment, with the town. Though they don't want to use earphone. They don't want to use audio. The other big information is that I am a friend of them now, and I'm happy to be a friend, and they trust me. They don't trust the satellite. They don't want to be guided by a navigator. Okay. Well, but what's the issue? What's the problem? It's good. But then it takes me for, if I'm a volunteer, it takes time for me to go there to help them. One hour helping them means one hour moving from home downtown to help them moving around. Another problem is privacy. They want to do something without my presence. So we invented, in my research group, the idea of a tactile angel. So it's someone that remotely is guiding uh, the blind person. You know, he is wearing these devices, which is tactile. So these devices are acting as a friend who is uh, steering him on the left and the right, go left, go right, but without being invasive, without, without we present. So we can tele-guide, tele-operate the blind. Of course, the blind, Guy has a camera in the middle, in, the, in between uh, the eyeglasses, and the streaming of the video is going to remote tactile angel who is able to steer them. And you can imagine now that if I have to give one hour of my work day to help them, it's easy, because it can be done at home. Yes, now in this uh, lovely video that we recorded with uh, Massimo, the blind friend, we were in the lovely city of uh, Siena, where we are, and uh, I was helping him wearing 
the devices. I don't know if the, we can hear the audio. And he, he is walking into the town, <laughs> driven simply by having uh, impulses, uh, vibrations on the forearms. There is the, the angel who is remotely guiding him. He's not selling saying anything, he's like if it was at home. Now he's, he will receive an impulse on the left, a turn on the left. He will move on the left and he will reach the pharmacy, something which was impossible before for him, without having a close friend to him. And this is very important. I asked two things to Massimo, the blind friend. Oh, thank you. Two things I asked to Massimo. One is, uh, how do you feel? And he said, freedom. I feel free to move. And the other thing, is that I feel safe, because there is someone. It's not the satellite, there is someone. And this is something that we want to uh, go forward with this technology. Well, we are talking about touch. So touch is uh, the main sense that blind people use. What's going on in touch? Touch is probably the most robust sense that we have, the, that we have, the sense of touch. How many people we know that are blind? Yes, they are in the theater. How many people we know that cannot hear? Yes, we know. How many people we know that are not able to touch, to feel the touch? No one. Probably I have some grandfather who had a stroke and who, le who lost some perception on the right hand, but the whole body is ready to perceive touch. So it's something that we want to exploit. But why touch is not exploited? Touch is not exploited, in my opinion, for one main reason. The reason is that in the distant past, there was the plague. There was the infectious disease, the epidemic, skin-to-skin -skin touch was the major way of getting infection. So all the cultures at that time and even nowadays try to keep the touch in a more closed environment, in the family. And this is, I think, one of the reasons now. But now this technology, this wearable robotics, this wearable technology allow to touch each other without, to have, without having the skin-to-skin -skin interaction. So I can in tactile interactively being safe from this side. I also think that these are wearable robots. I think that one of the big issues in technology is wearability. And in my, in my group, we are really pushing a lot technology in this direction. You can see two wearable bracelets, the one that they were uh, wearing, and this is for tactile interaction at the fingertip. And this is something that we want to really uh, push you in our research. Well, if you imagine the kind of application that you can do behind helping blind, you can imagine, let, let, let's see this video, which is really interesting for me. And uh, there is a piano player who is playing his uh, uh, song, his jazz song. This is in Siena Jets. And he is sending all the information, tactile information to the audience. But let's see in a moment. He's recording the tactile interaction with the key. So everything is recorded there and is sent wirelessly to the audience where there are people using the same tactile glove that now use as a speaker, tactile speaker, under their fingertip, they feel the touch of the keyboard by the piano player. This is remote transmission of touch. It's very, very important. You can imagine rehabilitation. Something, I want to rehabilitate, to rehabilitate uh, the manipulation aspects. This is some technology that can be in that direction. I can squeeze my hand to my grandmother saying, uh, uh, far away from me. So adding to the video chat, also the tactile interaction, which is really immersive. Or I can imagine another kind of application, and I really love now to show the application of uh, a mom who is touching her daughter, and actually she's Elena, I was talking about before, and Stefania. And of course, if we are able to transmit, we are also able to record. So I can also record with this tactile technology the tactile interaction. So you can think about some important moment, like the born of your daughter, or like getting the degree, or the laurea, or whatever. And you will see now, in a moment, there is a, the mom in the library, actually. There is the mom touching the, the baby, the son, and this tactile interaction was recorded. It went into a file. You have to imagine a DVD with the visual, video trace, audio trace, and tactile trace. So you can record it in a file, and then you can go back to home, and you can perceive everything back by using the same globe. So you can 
have the same experience that you had many times, many years before, and then you can play back. As I promised to Elena, she said, Elena, you have to start talking about, uh, talking about helping blind, but you have also to finish talking about blind. And this is a, a video of uh, another friend who is blind, and she is Elena. Elena is here with uh, Massimo. Thanks, Elena, for joining. And she is 30 years, and uh, she was uh, in our lab, and uh, she, she didn't know at all the environment. She had to move from one door to another door of the lab without having uh, the, uh, someone helping them. Of course, there is the white cane, or she can use the dog, but the dog does not know where she has, she has to go. The white cane and the dog only helps to avoid the obstacle in front of your steps, but not where to go. And this is the video I want to finish with. There is Elena walking close to my lab, and all, there are all the people working in the team, and she's moved, she's uh, driven, she's guided by the tactile remote angel who send information on the bracelets, only tactile, no audio feedback. Turn left. And now she's approaching our lab, where we typically live all day, I would say also all night, and uh, stay there. And we have an applause for <laughs> Elena getting uh, into the lab completely autonomously. So I think that this will be an important era where we will add to video and audio communication by mobile phones, also the tactile layer, where we can build a lot, a lot of devices and application. I want to finish thanking my lovely team and my close colleagues, and of course, the European projects supporting us. Thank you. <laughs>